Welcome. I'm going to talk about virtual cabinet, and I'm also going to talk about uh, managing your emails. And um, as ever with the webinars, everyone's on mute. So if you do have any questions, stick something in the chat box or the question box, and I'll keep a look of them um, as I go along. I should introduce myself. My name is Ken Byrne. I am the account manager, one of the account managers here uh, in Virtual Cabinet. And I, as I said, want to talk about uh, email capture as well. If there are any other questions, by the way, I have come up with some of the webinars or people have other questions, please, please do. These are recorded. So if you want to hear them again, or if you want to share them with a colleague, just ask and we can send a link to the recording when um, it's completed. And Apologies if we don't get to answer all the questions. Uh, past experience shows us that lots of people ask lots of questions and we just can't get to them all, but we do share them around to the relevant account manager and they can come back and um, answer it uh, as well. But we will keep an eye on what's going on. So this is what I want to cover today. So I was actually looking back and um, I am probably showing my age a little bit, but I actually recall the first email I ever saw. It was back in either 1979 or 1980, I can't remember. And the university uh, I was in, one of the professors showed me um, him sending an email to Trinity College in Dublin. And frankly, I couldn't get my head around the email. I was like, this is taking forever. He had to dial up. He actually phoned the guy to make sure his computer was on. And I, I was like, this doesn't work. But when he sent a complex formula um, via email, I was like, ah, oh, I, I can see it working. And since then, I guess emails have grown um, incredibly. So we do drown in emails. I might spend most of my day, even though we have other solutions uh, and, and systems in place, like our, our new software, um, Get Busy, um, which has like an instant messaging function and um, you can send to your client that, it, that isn't, isn't so document-centric. We have a portal in virtual cabinet. And obviously, we have our phones, and lots of people send lots of things every way. Email is still probably the primary mode of communication. So I want to cover up what we can help. A couple of things on you know um, what you should do with emails, etc. And then I'll demo virtual cabinet email capture um, solution, and we'll cover any questions uh, as well. But before we start, I just thought I'd run a little poll you can click multiple questions multiple questions yeah multiple questions multiple answers uh, on on the poll so please go ahead that's launched right now you should be able to see it and um, if if uh, people on the um, webinar now can just click on some of the solutions of, of what you use you can as i said you can click multiple ones i was going to put an other on there but um sometimes the other gets populated by like 80% like or something, and then you can't really know what the other is. So, so I took it off. But um, if you can just run that now, and then I'll give you, uh, I'll, I'll post the solution as well when it, it gives me a feel for what are some of the things we can actually show you and then maybe help with as well. Okay, thanks very much for doing that. I'm going to close it now. And now I'm going to display the results. Actually, it's quite interesting because one of the one of my kind of bugbears almost, and I'll show you that when I show do the demo, is is actually having folders uh, in in Outlook, which is kind of an old habit that people have, and the virtual cabinet is probably a little bit better at doing it. And um, I see a lot of people manual indexing the VC, and the whole this whole webinar is really to show you some of the automated solutions that we we have as well. So um, I guess that's why there's quite a big uh, proportion of people saying they manually index, and maybe you want to see how you want to automate your solution. So I'm just hoping, oh, there we go. I did kind of talk about some of the state of email that's, that's going on, et cetera. I actually saw one of the stats that I didn't put on here, which is 1989, a couple of experts got together and they predicted that other tech would replace emails in the next five years. Uh, and one of the tech they said that would replace emails is faxes. So um, there we go. For many years, people are saying, oh, email is dying and we have other ways to communicate uh, and that kind of stuff. But you can see that email usage is still growing around the world. We all know we receive a lot of emails and we all know we have to handle them, manage them. And while we don't now send sensitive information through email, it's definitely out of our organizations, clients do send us stuff back to, to email as well, which they shouldn't do. Uh, so we do use other methods, secure portals and those kind of things to, to send that information. We still receive a lot of emails, some automated emails, um, et cetera. So, it's there, it's happening, and let's see what we can do about it. Just want to say there are a few questions popped in already. Thanks very much. I'm not going to answer them now because I do actually cover them when I, I'll do my um, uh, demo. 
I looked and, 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 and thought of things that, that we need to do to kind of build good habits uh, around emails. And I said one of my books where I thought the number top of the list is get, get rid of your folders. And I'll show you how to do that with virtual cabinet. Uh, one of the other things that a lot of people have, though, is they have subscribed to lots of stuff that give them automated emails, you know, like uh, offers and those kind of things. And I was, I was just unsubscribed from everything. But also, if you do want to subscribe to something, have a Gmail account or, or one of those free accounts and subscribe to them via that, because that way it doesn't clutter up your, your outlook and your day-to-day -day business, doesn't distract you. And then when you want to, when you take a break or whatever, you can pop in, look at your Gmail and then see see those things for offers from you know online stores and, and, and that kind of stuff. Indexed immediately, so it's really important, I think, and it's a good habit, and I'll show you that a little bit later on, is to, when you receive an email, you index it immediately. So lots of people wait until there's something important in the email or they wait until the change develops to save an email or, or, or whatever. Um, and that's actually a bad habit. You should do it straight away. And I'll explain the reasons why to give the, give the surface that information to the rest of the business. Um, and also then to make sure you're capturing uh, things uh, as well. Um, also, um, set a limit of time you spend it here. I am as, as guilty as that as anyone else. Um, and I, I'm getting into a better habit now of actually turning off my emails when I've got some, something that I need to concentrate on. I concentrate on that for 15 minutes or half an hour or whatever. And then I go back again and open my emails again, look at it uh, when, when I need to. Focus is exactly kind of similar to, to the similar one, but you know, get your emails done, sorted, index them straight away, uh, and then move on, to, move on to the next thing. And then the one minute rule, and um, I tend not to do that, but I know lots of people do. Either if you can answer that email in, in like a minute and 30 seconds, fire off and do it. On the other side of that, lots of people have a delay that when they write, they fire an email, they have a five minute delay before it's actually sent out. Because often people write an email, you go onto something else, you go, oh, I need to add that document, or oh, I need to add that expert information, or oh, hang on a minute, maybe I haven't worded that correctly and you can go back and retrieve that email before it's sent out. So that's kind of some of the stuff that you can do um, around emails. I said, I don't think they're getting going anywhere or in a way, et cetera. Uh, let's look at what virtual cabinet can help you with. So lots of positive points around here. And I'm gonna kind of jump to the end as well. So we have a very strong retention policy built now built into virtual cabinet basically around gdpr we looked at it and we discovered we could do a lot of stuff with virtual cabinet in terms of we know the date the document was put in there we can give it a, a use by date or a date to be destroyed deleted we can move documents around automatically and you know why are we saving emails why are we even bothering to save emails we're saving emails for now or the next month or so, so someone can say, oh, you know, what's going on with this client? What are we doing now? But we're also saving you for five years time where some client will come back to us and go, actually, I, you gave me wrong information or this didn't happen or we were looking at this and you can go back and you can show, show what you've done. So that's kind of the end result of why we, we're, we're saving uh, emails. And um, the big thing about Outlook folders and actually indexing emails into a central single source of truth. So virtual cabinet is that single source of truth. You, uh, you save all your documents in there. You save all the communication for your clients in there. And, and it becomes the one place in the organization to go and find out what's going on. But if you've got folders in your Outlook emails, you have that and nobody else can, nobody else can see it. Um, so it doesn't help with the flow of information, the visibility um, uh, of, of what's going on within your organization and within your interaction with your, with your clients. The time saving and productivity actually happens all, all automatically. Once you get into the habit of indexing emails and using your email capture solutions and the automatic email capture solution which carries on saving emails when you're not even, even looking at them, then you start to build in your, your time efficiency as well. And there's nothing worse than a client ringing in or sending an email saying, hey, I'm chasing up with this. And you're going, oh, I think, you know, so-and-so, Sophie was, was dealing with this, but she's on holiday today. Who's got it? Ring the client back. Really sorry, Sophie's on holiday. Can you repeat what was going on? You don't have to do that. The e email saved in the correct place. You can go along and you can see the thread. You can see what else is going on and you can, you can, you can pick it up and, and, and just go with it. So there are kind of the benefits of, of using virtual cabinet and our automatic email capture solutions. And I just wanted to start talking about how we address that. There are lots of solutions to email management. So our email solutions work with Office 365 or um, Exchange. They don't work with Gmail and those 
those type of things. So we've had that, those discussions in the past. Basically, if we could, we would make them work with them. We, we, we can't. So some people don't actually save their emails into, into virtual cabinet. They just rely on the backup that Office 365 for Exchange does. And if they have to go back and look through the history, they, they, they can. And, vir and virtual cabinet itself isn't designed to be a backup of your email solution. So yeah, go ahead and back them up there. But it's designed to be able to give you that information clearly. And when I finished kind of the demo, I'll go into virtual cabinet. I'll show you the different types of searching you can do across emails, which is way superior than any of the kind of backup solutions that you've, you've got uh, on online. And you know, it, it feeds back into what virtual cabinet is. We're a document management solution. We have massively different ways you can search, find, retrieve documentation, uh, including emails as well. Now, we have two solutions fully automatic capture and called semi-automatic capture. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate, but I will talk on my next slide about fully automatic capture solutions, um, and, with, and I will demo the semi-automatic. Um, the reason being, probably eight years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I would say 70, 80% of our clients use the fully automatic capture solution, um, and they loved it. But doesn't match what's happened with what's going on with the marketplace. So as time went on, we developed a new solution. It, it, it involves a tiny bit more input from you or from the front, the semi-automatic capture, but it gives you the control. Um, and I'll probably mention this uh, again. We call it the um, uh, the intelligent interface. So you are the intelligent interface so saying, do I need to index this email? Do I need to stop indexing this email? You know, this this, this thread of emails, et cetera. Or fully automatic just, just carries, on, carries on saving everything. I'll talk about that now, uh, as I said. So the next slide here just shows what I'm, I'm going to talk about within Virtual Cabinet, basically what Outlook is, how we interact with it, how we, how we index stuff into Virtual Cabinet, how you can set up some defaults, what conversation rules are, what email suggestions are, and, and how, we, how we do everything. And, and my demo will cover all that, and I'll put that at the end to make sure I've, I've, I've hit each of those points. But first, I want to talk about our fully automated solution. So, Basically, an email comes in to your email solution, whether it's Office 365 or Exchange, it doesn't matter, it's in your Outlook. What we then do, we've got two choices. We can look at the email address, so John Smith at H Concrete, and we will take that email address and look up your practice management system, your back office system, your CRM, wherever your store of client data is, we will look that up. And we will go, oh, look, here's John Smith. He's belonged to Age Concrete and we'll save that email uh, in automatically. So every time he saves an email, it gets, it gets saved in and you have no interaction with it whatsoever. You don't have to, have to touch it. And that works really well. So we can do that via the email address or we can do it via the client code. So um, again, uh, probably the only people that really surface this using our systems are, are legal firms. You often see them in square brackets. It'll have your client code, you know, ABC123 in, 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 in square brackets in the subject line of uh, the um, email. And what, what our system is doing is looking for that client code and doing exactly the same, taking that client code, going to the back office system and saying, what does this client code relate to? Oh, it relates to John Smith, if it's concrete, we'll save those emails away. So that's the fully automated solution. We still use it. We still have clients using it as well, and we can we can support that um, as well. And if that sounds of interest to you, let us know, and we can explore that a little bit more detail um, in your organisation. Where the inflexibility happens is that it is fully automated. So it saves every single email. So if John Smith emailing me, and we're talking about something to do with business, and all those emails are going to be saved, absolutely fantastic. But then if he wants to talk about the, the, the football results last night, it saves those emails too. If we're organizing a meeting and I think, can you see me on the 12th? And he goes, no, I can see on the 11th. And I, I'll say, oh, actually, would it be would 10 o'clock? So he goes, oh, maybe in the afternoon. Every single one of those emails is also saved in. And um, so, so that's where the fully automated solution starts to fall down a bit in terms of cluttering up um, in, information. The other place where um, it's probably fallen a little bit more out of favor is that back when we developed it, most people had one email address, so that was okay. Now people have multiple email addresses. Those multiple email addresses need to be stored in your in your back office system, your CRM, your practice management system, so that our automatic solution can look at those emails and then put them in the, look at those all the email addresses from his Gmail account, from his Outlook account, from his uh, John Smith at hconcrete.com account, and save, save them in as well. Also, if you have a client that has multiple businesses, multiple cases, multiple policies with you, and they email in, you have then a choice. Do you save every single email against all those policies? 
or do you not save those emails and then have to manually save them against the correct policy when it comes in? So there, that's the fully automated solution. It does work, but has its limitations. We looked at those limitations. And that's why we built the semi-automatic solution because um, it gives you, the, as I said, the intelligent interface it, it, to be able to see what's going on and what's working for you, where you want the email to be saved. It gives you more uh, ability to add things in a much more specific targeted place. And with that, I might as well start the demo of Outlook. Brilliant. So these are my re real emails up here. I've been pretty good. I've only got three unread emails in my inbox. Um, which I'm not going to show you, but they're from clients, etc. And um, I'm probably the only person in the world that loves getting a spam email. So I put it in my demo emails, and these are all spam emails here, so I can demonstrate what's going on. If you look on the left hand side, I have almost no folders. Why do I have almost no folders? Because I save everything into virtual cabinet. I don't save anything into folders. If I save something into a folder, it means only I can see it, nobody else can see it. If I save it, index it into virtual cabinet, that means it's visible to the rest of the organization, people can see. So if someone rings into support, if someone rings in to one of the project guys, or someone emails in, I should say, to one of the dev guys that's working on something, they can go into virtual cabinet, they can see the thread of emails that I've sent, and they can see any documents, etc. They've got a full picture. Let me just scroll up to the top because all these emails have been saved. Let's say there's a brand new email in, and let me open it up fully, and I'll show you how it works um, in terms to, in order to save. Let me open up the email from Greg. Okay. And what we have is we have an index pane on the right hand side. Okay. And that index allows you to save the email into virtual cabinet. So this index pane here. Some of the things, by the way, that I'm going to show you, there is a cost to them and some of them are free. It's really hard to break them down here, um, but I will I will show you some of the stuff as best I can. This index pane you can set up right now if you're a virtual cabinet user. You can have these boxes that allow you to index the documents into virtual cabinet. Where we start to have the cost to fit is the email conversation rules and the email suggestions, but I'll show you those a little bit later. So. This is an email. You'll see I've set up a couple of defaults as well. So for instance, I save this email into my client's accountancy cabinet. I have multiple cabinets, by the way. You may only have one, you know, maybe financial services or whatever you call it, or maybe just called cabinet, but I've saved, saved it to there. I've also defaulted the first tab, which is general correspondence from a client, but I could, uh, this is my accountancy uh, folder, so I can use accountancy. I could be saving stuff against tax computations or, or whatever if it was, I wanted it more specific. In this case, I don't. The other thing is the date of the email, 8th of July. I put it as a document date as well. Automatic default, I haven't done it. And the description, which is in this case, is a little bit bizarre if I can, is the description here. Again, all this is totally controlled by you. So for instance, in this case, a pretty good example, that is a terrible description to save documents in under. So I will get rid of it and I will call it LinkedIn Insight. Notice I don't call it the client name, whatever, because right here, this is where you have to use your imagination a little bit because I don't have panoptic consultancy as a name, but let's just say uh, my client name is H Concrete. As I type this in, we're looking up a live list in virtual cabinet of all my client names. Um, and as I type it in further, it narrows it down for me and I'll go, yes, that's the client name. I want to save it again. It goes away to your practice management system, takes the client name, and brings back the client code and puts, puts them into email. And now that email is ready to be filed. So I can just file that email away. So that's kind of the start of indexing the email uh, into virtual cabinet. And that's obviously an email that um, popped in to my intro. Um, I'm not gonna save it by the way, just cause I can save it for the next time, but let's get out of that and let's actually start a brand new email. So I'm gonna do a brand new email. I'm gonna actually send this to um, Scott, who's one of the engineers here. Some of you might know him. So I'm going to say here is your contract. Uh, as you'll see, I've saved an email before from Scott, but I'm just going to skip that just to kind of show you. So I'm starting a brand new uh, email. I put in the client name. I can put in a, a CC person uh, as well. 
as you can see, I've defaulted to where the cabinet's going. I defaulted to, to the to the correspondence file. I can type it against. I can add it against a client name. Okay, the description here is your contract is actually saved as a description. It's today's date. So quite a lot of stuff has been in. But let's say I'm in here. I'm starting to write the email. I go, oh, actually, I need to add a document in here. Well, you can from here go from virtual cabinet. You can perform a search, and you can go from your Outlook. There we go. You can go in to your cabinet. You can put in the client name. You can do a quick search, and you can find. Uh, we just need up the screen a little bit. Let's call. Let's go for the contract. There's the sales contract in a PDF. It gives me a preview, obviously, uh, of it if I wanted to see it a little bit closer. And I can attach that document to this email. And as you see, I can file it in the virtual cabinet. It gives me a little idea of where that email, all the details I've just put in there. So it tells me exactly where the email has been sent. Part of the conversation rule, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And that email is now indexed into virtual cabinet. And I can add further details. And they will be added into the email in virtual cabinet as I hit send. Okay, so both ways you can, as you start to write an email, you can save it into virtual cabinet. You can go into virtual cabinet from your emails and grab a document. You could be in virtual cabinet, grab those documents and start an email that way. Either way works. And everything is saved into virtual cabinet. Um, I'm going to answer some of the questions that came in there because it's probably a good point, and then we'll come back and, and, and talk about conversation rules and suggestions. I probably don't have a massively good example here. Let's go to my send items actually, and let's go to this this email here that I just sent. So let's say this is ex these are external people. You can see it's it's to Scott and it's 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 copied in into Sophie. So when either of those read that email, the first person in that would receive it would index it. They can see it's indexed. Anyone on copy, if they open the email, will see it's been indexed and they can see all everything that's going on. And you can index it into multiple places. So that was one of the questions people asked if what if a client writes to me and it needs to go to it needs to go against a specific policy, but it also needs maybe to go to finance because it's a query on some fees or something. Both departments can save that email into two different locations of virtual cabinet if they need to do so, and it will be displayed here on the right hand side. You can save emails in multiple places, not a problem. And you can have multiple conversation rules going on about those. So maybe finance pick up the email, write back to the client and say, Hey, that, that finance bit is sorted, and they can finish that, finish the conversation rule, and that that's absolutely fine. And maybe the other thread carries on because they're talking about a policy, etc. So it is possible to save an email in multiple locations and it will always be displayed here on the right hand side. Okay, so that answers a couple of the questions that came in. So I'll go back to my demo area. So that's start is getting an email in and indexing into virtual cabinet. And it's also starting an email and actually adding documents, etc. from virtual cabinet and firing it out as well. The other thing I want to show you is if I see this email here, which has already been saved from Lorraine Allen, this email that's been saved in Lorraine. So, so Lorraine sent an email previously. I can see where it's been indexed into virtual cabinet. Um, I can see it's against ABC Limited. I can see the name of the email is actually the description of the document. I can see there's a conversation rule going on, and I'll explain conversation rules right now. If I hit reply to this email, okay, and I'll go. Um, So I replied to the email, said to the rain, hi, give me a call uh, and I'll send it. That second email of mine will now be saved in this email thread. I don't have to do anything else. And if Lorraine replies back to me, um, it will be saved in this email thread into virtual cabinet. So I think I said at the start, and it's, it's important now, people hold off saving emails until something important happens or um, you know, they reach a point where they go, okay, I need to save those emails now. Don't save the very, very first email in with conversation rules turned on, and then every subsequent email is saved in the right location. And where the intelligent interface, where you come into this, if Lorraine writes back to me and we get to a point, and then she says, hey, let's meet up, or 
did you see the football last night? Or much more importantly, do you, do you watch the Lions rugby? Then you can turn off the conversation mode. You can go, actually, I don't need those emails to be saved into virtual cabinet. It says, do you, do you want to speak this room? I'll go, yeah. And that, and that those emails now will be stopped. So if I hit reply to Lorraine now and say, um, and fire that to her, that email is not saved into virtual cabinet because I've turned off the conversation rule. So you, you've got the ability to stop emails being saved in. If she sent me something back that was really important to my business, then of course I can start again and I can, I can file it again, start the conversation rule again and resave those emails in as well. So you have full control wherever it goes. The other thing you can do directly from here, so let's say um, I'm on copy to so someone else sent an email, I'm on copy, I know that something's going on, or I need to catch up, what's, what's going on with, with this? And I, from here, I can jump directly into Virtual Cabinet, and I can jump directly in either to the client, or actually on the, the um, actual email uh, conversation rule uh, itself. Let me just drag Virtual Cabinet over to the screen. So here we are, here's, here's the emails uh, that have been saved but this is abc limited and here's all the other documentation going on with abc so i can see other emails that have been saved in here either from lorraine or whatever i can see documents that have been that have been sent out as well so everything everything that's been saved in has been has, has i can see and that's going directly from outlook doing a quick search in virtual cabinet on abc limited i could search on the doc date range, I can search on the, the description title, uh, everything else uh, as well. Okay, the last part which you might have seen is email suggestions. So this is the email I was looking at, you can see I've read it, it's got a little tick box, a little green box to say, yes, yeah, that's saved in virtual cabinet. And again, anyone on copy that will open that email within my organization will be able to see that it's been saved into, into virtual cabinet. Here's a fresh email from Lorraine. It's actually the same email that she sent multiple times, but never mind. Um, and what, what Virtual Cab now does is, is, is give me some suggestions. It says, actually, typically you save most of the emails from Lorraine against ABC Limited, and you save some against Ace Concrete. And you see this, this actually puts them in order of popularity. So more people will save it against ABC and Ace Concrete. Um, and that gives you about 10 suggestions um, as you go through. So if if I'm saving emails from Lorraine against different policies or different cases, if I'm in insolvency, or different accounts or businesses um, that, that uh, she may be uh, in charge of, and um, each of those is listed here. And again, to save time, I've saved into ABC before, I click on it, and every single thing is filled in. We've pulled the, the description in automatically. We've pulled the document date in automatically. We already know it's ABC Limited and the client code, so we've done that as well. We already defaulted everything. So in order to be able to save, let me just jump out of the email, I'll show you again. In order to be able to save this fresh new email from Lorraine, I just go, yep, that's for ABC Limited. I click on that, and I hit file, and that email saved as well. It's a fresh new email in, not, nothing to do with a, a previous conversation rule, nothing to do with anything else. It's just a fresh new email in, and it's saved exactly where it is with one click. And that starts to work very, very quickly within virtual cabinet. So someone's just asked that as well. So the email suggestions, I would say within a week of starting to use it, will then start to surface information saying, hey, this is where you typically save emails for these people, just click one, one click to index everything in. I default that my conversation rule is always on. So again, if that was a one-off email, I might not want to have the conversation rule on, but I default that it's on the whole time. It saves me a, another click uh, as well. Uh, okay. So that's quite a lot of stuff that we've done there in, in, in a very short space of time. So basically, I've shown you how to start an email, uh, either from your Outlook as well, or you can start it from Virtual Cabinet, and I've shown you how to save even index emails into Virtual Cabinet. I've shown you conversation rule, which means once you save one email, all the subsequent emails are saved in. And I've showed you email suggestions, which just where you might want to save emails from people uh, as well. And okay, someone's asked me to index another email in. Okay, fine, I'm happy to do that. So let's say here's an email in from David Murphy. I don't know David Murphy. He's never communicated with me before. This is where the index pane opens on the right-hand side. As I said, I've got my email conversation rule ticked to start automatically, so I'll save this email, reply to him, and then every sort of email is saved in the location that I need to save it to. Let's say this client is from uh, Brian Clark. Uh, is the name of the business. It doesn't. It, it should return the client code at this stage, but I don't have a client code associated with Brian Clark. It's my, it's my demo system, so that's okay. 
I've got a description, Global Enterprise fills in the description here. I've got the date, 6th of July, document date here. So basically with a couple of clicks, I can index that information into, into virtual cabinet. You'll see it starts to build the suggestions as it goes through. So if I was, if, um, okay, I'll demonstrate that as well. So someone says, actually, I want to save this email in two locations. So David Murphy for Research and Markets is, is associated with Brian Clark, but he's also associated with uh, my, other con my other client, uh, Ace Concrete Limited. So that's fine. I'll, I'll file that as well. And so now you'll see it's filed in two locations, one against uh, Brian Clark Limited, one against Age Concrete Limited, um, and there's two conversation rules running uh, against each of those uh, as well. And you can do that multiple times as well. So I said one might go to finance, one might go to accounts. Uh, you might be saving uh, emails uh, forever. Okay, I think it's probably covered uh, it. I probably covered most of the stuff. So. I've shown you the fully automated capture solution, the indexing pane, and how it links to VC, the defaults that you can that I've set up. And I'm not going to show you how to do them. They're really simple, but I just haven't got time in this uh, webinar. Ah, okay. The, the one thing I haven't shown, which is some of the virtual cabinet searching functionality that's available. Okay, let me just put this over here. So this is my virtual cabinet. Let me just do a search. So what I'm searching, I'm just going to my go to my account cabinet and um, I'm going to go to my client name which we'll be saving some stuff into which is Ace Concrete and I'm going to do what's called the lazy search which is just the accountancy name and just the client cabinet name and then leave everything else uh, as it is. What a lot of people don't tend to do, let me just neaten this up slightly for you guys, um, what tend to do is actually if you scroll down on the search we automatically capture a lot of information that is in the email without you having to do anything. So when we save an email, we can easily see who it was sent to, who was on copy from the email, what the subject line is. As you saw, I defaulted that to be the, 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 the description to be the subject, but you can change that as well. Who sent the email, what date it was received, all those information is actually automatically captured. And you can search on that information. So again, when I talked earlier on about things like people using the backup for Outlook 365 or Exchange to store their emails, um, or even on your folders, you can't search across multiple items like this. So I can say, oh, I know that my colleague Sophie received an email, and it was probably sometime in May, so I'll do a date range search between the start and the end of, of, of May that was copied to Sophie, and I'll find all the emails in the index of the virtual cabinet, and then very quickly I can narrow down and, and find exactly what exactly what they are. So we capture all that information automatically. You saw that I didn't have to put that information in there, but we, we saved it. And here are the emails that I've just been saving uh, into virtual cabinet this morning. So if I just open up this so you can see it properly, and you, you'll see that this is the, one of the emails that I saved. Let's, let's open this one. Here we go. Okay, so here's the email here that we saved um, a little bit uh, earlier on. And um, some of the other things you can do in terms of searching. So I said you can search uh, basically on, uh, you know, who sent the email, who was from, those kind of things. You've also got the ability to do that across all the index panes you wish on the right hand side. So for instance, you can you can actually search an email from within virtual cabinet itself. So um, obviously it won't be a massive search because, but I can type Lorraine in here or Law for short, and we'll bring back all the emails from Lorraine. As you can see, and um, there's the email that I, I saved um, this morning. And um, if you wanted to um, do further searches um, on the indexes, you can actually see who was copied uh, in on the email as well. And you remember I copied Sophie in on one, so I can type in Sophie in here. It will pull back the emails, uh, and there's the email that I sent um, with the attachment as well. So all that is possible from within virtual cabinet to be able to see the emails, see the searching, that kind of stuff. And I'm not going to spend too much time on it because otherwise we can get into a huge amount of uh, searching within virtual cabinet, but we have the ability to, to narrow down those searches uh, really, easy, really easily. That is the searching ability within virtual cabinet uh, as well. So to kind of sum up, and I'll have a quick look at the questions while I have this screen on here is that we have a strong solution for indexing and email handling uh, within virtual cabinet. If you've been using folders in, in Outlook, it's probably the biggest habit to break. And I'll give you someone's asked me, yeah, someone's just asked me, you know, how do we get started? And, and, and actually it's funny that this title is called how we get started. So um, speak to your account manager. We can get the index panes and stuff set up 
straight away. As I said, both, basically the cost um, would be for the conversation rules and suggestions, the, the automated stuff that actually speeds speed thing, things up. Um, I would say at the start, carry on, let people carry on using the folders on the left-hand side uh, where they want it, they, they feel comfortable saving emails, but they need to index stuff into virtual cabinets immediately. And then once people are starting to use indexing it into virtual cabinets, then you need to break the habit of using uh, Outlook folders because, um, especially the semi-automated uh, solution, you don't need to save, the, save, the, save it into an Outlook folder. The amount of times I go around to a client and I say, oh, what's happening with this client? Just, just show me what you're doing or show, show me something or other. And they go, okay. And they go, who's been dealing with, you know, whoever, uh, John Smith? Um, and then someone says, I have. And they go to the route book, they go to a folder which is really long. They scroll down, they find John Smith's where they are, and then they scroll down to the emails, find something. I mean, why haven't you saved that into virtual cabinet? Why wouldn't you go into virtual cabinet and see all the documentation, all the emails that have been sent, uh, and that kind of stuff? You narrow down those searches uh, really easily. Um, so once you start, once you start doing that, as I said, suggestions start to kick in even after about a week. They'll start to be and. and and as it goes on, it's constantly updating itself. So as things change, it, it will help you insert that information. As I said, speak to your account manager and then never look back. I, I've answered most of the questions as we've gone along. So I hope so. There's a couple there that are kind of complicated. Um, so I've, unfortunately, uh, I've, been, uh, I've been ignoring them. Um, but we will pass them on to your, to your account manager when we see them. Okay, the, one of the few questions that I will answer is that there are some limitations with Outlook and how Office 365 works with Virtual Cabinet. So sometimes when people index emails, the flags don't appear straight away, for instance. And um, typically your Virtual Cabinet will pull uh, out, out, out Office 365 about every 15 minutes so that it does take a little bit of time for them to come on. Again, if you have any other bugs and things like that, just please, um, Go to your account manager or go back to support and we can we can actually give you advice um, and actually help you help you on those. Just thought I'd put a picture up of um, some of the account managers here in uh, virtual cabinet. Um, you may know some of us, may know uh, all of us. I, I'll stick them on there. If you don't have our details, you don't know who it is, you do have account managers at virtualcabinet.com as an email address and someone will pick us up and help us. We, we use that as well when we're a little bit busy so uh, someone else can support you. Okay, um, sorry I didn't answer all the questions. Uh, there are a few there that I, I um, haven't got to. Um, thanks very much. I'll just leave it for a minute more. Um, have a great day. I'm glad this webinar wasn't on Monday next week because there'd be definitely nobody logging in and I don't think there'd be anyone would be very productive uh, then. Okay, thanks very much everyone. Take care, bye.